Hi, I am so happy to be here with all of you today, live, in person, in the flesh. This is, um, it, feels, it feels momentous and big. Um, I was just reminiscing with a colleague that exactly two years ago to this day, I was doing a presentation much like this one, and the next day the world shut down. And now we're back, so, so yay, this is great. Um, I'm here to talk to you uh, today about my favorite topic in my professional life, um, which is how we leverage brand to drive business. And when we do that for our credit unions, our credit unions become stronger. We're able to deliver more for our employees, for our members, for the community, for the nation, for the entire world. So what could be more worthy than that? Um, and these are the people that we are trying to reach through your brand. So let's get into it. Um, we're gonna start today by talking about uh, just some numbers knowing that if I know anything about credit union executives and boards, it is that they like numbers, that they are data driven. So let's take a look. There are 4,000 banks. There are 5,100 credit unions in the US today. And even though that's consolidating, there are still 10,000 financial institutions that your financial institution has to stand out from. And even if in your market, it's just a, really a fraction of that, that is still a dizzying amount of choice. Another number is that, and I think we can all relate to this, is that we are all of us bombarded with marketing messages all day, every day, with every screen we interact with. So a lot of noise out there. And at the same time, people's attention span are getting shorter and shorter. So we have more stuff to break through and a shorter amount of time to have our brand make a connection and matter to people. Um, last number I'm gonna share here for a moment. At the same time, we know there's been an almost 300% increase really accelerated um, by COVID where, where people, consumers, are choosing non-banks. They are choosing uh, fintech and non-banks, not just as something they want to invest in or, or uh, experiment with, but as their primary financial institution. So that's, that's what we're up against. That is, those are the conditions. Um, and a great way of thinking about this is that there used to be the biggies and the baddies and everyone else were challengers, but now things have flipped and all financial credit unions at all size, or all credit unions, all financial institutions are all challengers. And that's actually a great place to be. There has never been a better time uh, for credit unions. Um, I believe that this is the time to say, yes, we accept this challenge and here's why really coming, it was before COVID, but, um, but really accelerated by COVID, there has just been a massive shift in the way that consumers interact with brands, what they want, what they're seeking. Everyone has had time to question what they are, what really matters to them with their financial institution, especially because they have more and more choices just by logging on to their phone. Um, but these, all of, all of this data, this shift is something that is putting the wind at credit unions' backs. It is all driving momentum for credit unions. We see that 66% of consumers now want to choose a PFI if it only has values that match my own. 68% want to know that your brand is going to demonstrate um, how it has a, a social good impact before they will transact with you. Um, at the same time, great news is that when they are weighing uh, your credit union versus a fintech, they still trust your fintech sev or your credit union 75% more than they trust a fintech. So we have that already that value of trust built in going for us. And finally, finally, at the beginning of 2022, there was a tipping point in consumer unaided awareness and consideration of credit unions. So that means if you just, if you, uh, if you go around and poll the market, take any market sample and say, do you, do you understand what a credit union is? 
And is it something that you would consider? We are finally past that 20% threshold. So all of this uh, is great news and there's nothing but opportunity ahead, especially because we know in this, at this very moment, there are people all in all of our markets that are thinking about switching their financial institution. Um, this used to be one in, one in 10 for years, something really bad, really traumatic, really ca catastrophic, or maybe something just really momentous would have to happen in your life. There was a hassle factor attached to this. Not so anymore, people are re-questioning their choices and they, uh, we have nowhere to go but to capture this one and four. Okay, so challenge accepted, but how do we do this? Um, there are three ways, and I'm gonna talk about all three and get into the how, showing some, um, some real case study examples that Adrenaline has, has worked through and some that, um, some that are more along the sort of thought-provoking ways that we can discuss this. The first, way is that you center your purpose in your brand and in everything you do. The second is that you stand out through your marketing approaches. And that the third is that you build and support great member experiences. Okay, so this is our, these are our chapters. Chapter one is centering purpose. And I'm gonna talk about this through the story of a client of Adrenaline's uh, Citadel Credit Union that um, is located outside of Pennsylvania. They are uh, they're about 80 years old, and they were first started to serve the steel workers and their families of the Lucan's um, steel mill. They actually built they they were the ones that created the steel that went into the World Trade Center. So these guys are really I guess these guys sons and and daughters. For, and they had actually, they had grown and done really well. They were out about $4 billion in assets. They had about 24 branches, um, but they were looking to grow and they were looking to expand into other counties and to take what they had to offer and, and just do more of it. Um, but you can see um, for years they had pursued a strategy that they sort of lovingly, half jokingly called uh, deliberate ambiguity. So you have the just the brand Citadel, it doesn't say credit union, it doesn't say bank, it doesn't really say anything. But if I had to guess, I might think it was a bank because the tagline says banking with one focus you. And this this strategy for Citadel had worked or so they thought because um, they were hoping to sort of to get over the hurdle of having people question their bona fides as a financial institution. And if you mistook them for a bank, great. They, they wanted to have you anyway. And actually, once you came into the organization, they even called their members customers. However, member growth had, had started to decline and they really needed to understand how they were going to reinvigorate their brand and their purpose. So, one, two big eye-opening pieces of research help, help shift this brand to really dive into and elevate their purpose. And it is that, first of all, 70% of their particular market, if you ask them, they were like, yeah, I, I know what a credit union is, I know what it does. So already that hurdle of educating the market had already been passed. It, they thought that they had to sort of explain and re-explain and over-educate about what a credit union is and does, but actually most people knew. Second of all, fully half of their market would be extremely or very interested in what the credit union had to offer because it was a credit union. So you had this entire market that was like, yeah, I know what a credit union is, and were I given the choice, I would choose this. But they didn't know because Citadel wasn't uh, elevating that part of their identity and celebrating it enough. So we took them through a brand strategy uh, process that was truly exhaustive not exhausting, it was an exhaustive process. And it focused on, there are two kind of key anchors. One is their archetypes, their brand archetypes. And we focused on one, which is the hero. And so if you think about those guys who are coming out from the, from the steel mill, 
and, and the strength that they um, brought. We really dug into their legacy, and the hero is someone that champions, that provides strength, and it's balanced by the archetype of the idealist. And the idealist is um, always sees the best in the world and sees a more equitable future for everyone. And it's really about those people helping people. Those two archetypes came together to tell the story of what their purpose is and ultimately led to how their brand expresses itself. So which all came together in their key brand idea, which is building strength. So building makes a lot of sense from, from their legacy, the, the strength that they bring. And then um, the fact that building could be something that is applicable to a young person just starting out in their career. It could be ap applicable to a family, to someone who's looking to retire, to a business that's looking to grow, and even to a community. This idea is meaningful to Citadel, but it's also meaningful to everyone else. And what it does is it expresses their purpose as a credit union at the very, as the cornerstone of their brand. Uh, this, their purpose-driven stories, so how we sort of build that out a little bit, is that Citadel delivers the unshakable promise, the unstoppable force, and the vision and tools that support our members' journeys. And so as uh, as this is rolled out internally, people begin to understand this is the purpose that we have to celebrate as the credit union that we are. All of which came together and is expressed in their identity. So this is, you remember, you remember I just showed you their old logo. This is their, their new refreshed logo. It is what we call a modern citadel. It is based on a hexagon, which happens to be nature's most strong and stable shape, but inside there's the arrow. It's moving forward. So this is building strength, and we're, it's expressed visually, and it, is, it elevates through the entire identity. This is Citadel Credit Union. So no longer is there, are they sort of hiding that part of their identity and their purpose. This is loud and proud nothing ambiguous about this. And their tagline, Building Strength Together, takes that idea of their position, their purpose, and puts it front and center. So this is how they tell their story. This is who we are, this is what we believe in, this is our purpose, and this is how we are going to connect it with you. And this comes to life in every part of their brand. And purpose-driven brands spend a lot of their sort of energy um, in their values. And so their values, opportunity, transparency, connection, security, became pillars around which to build their brand expression. Um, we highlighted people. This is a, a style of photography that we like to call Philly Proud. So these are looking at um, photographic styles of people in everyday moments that are exhibiting strength that you might not necessarily associate with strength. But we are showing them in all of their sort of authentic realness because we want people to connect um, with that purpose, with who they are. There's a full visual system of typography, of, of, um, of pattern elements, of uh, these icons and of photography, of color that really tell a different story to the market. The color palette itself, it's strong, it's bold, it's also vibrant, it's moving forward. Um, big shift for Citadel is not calling members customers, but calling them what they are, which are members, and making that a big part of how they express themselves to the market. So they're always making comparisons that, sorry, that we, Citadel, are strong because you, our members, are strong. We, we build strength together with one another making that a big part, and then showing just a system that shows the strength hidden in everyday moments all around us, ambitious, beautiful, and something that really stands out. Um, you see the, the look and feel come to life across their plastics, across their digital experiences, and then their, their tagline, which really became a rallying cry for the community, Quick anecdote on this is that uh, we started working with them in, in 2019. Their brand 
launch was uh, scheduled again for maybe like June of 2020, and we all know what happened. However, Citadel dug down and said, we're launching. We are launching this brand. And in August of 2020, they launched internally and then rolled out externally. Who could have known that uh, that a, um, a purpose-driven tagline like building strength together would have met the moment so perfectly? It was like a great, great little hidden coincidence there. Um, the brand comes to life across their, their branch designs, which have this very distinctive sort of red roof look and feel. And then I, I've highlighted up there, they've actually taken their purpose, the promise that they're making to their members, and they've literally built it into the walls of their branch. So this is a, a brand when you walk in from the minute you are aware of them to when you walk into the branch to every interaction that you have, the purpose is front and center about what they, what they seek to achieve and why they seek to achieve it with you, their member. Um, it becomes a key, uh, a key part of their marketing that helps to tie it all together and importantly gave them the ability to lift above uh, marketing that was focused entirely on rates and services. That's, that's where they had been and that's sort of a, it, it can be a path down. This became a platform that enabled them to tell a broader, more meaningful story. So, still early days, it's still just, it's at the beginning of 2022, but um, we see that there has been a, a true um, positive impact from the launch of this brand. And in fact, um, tracking from, uh, from pre-brand launch to post-brand launch now with both employees and members, um, we went from around 74% of having positive associations with Citadel to 90%. And that's powerful for them. We, we expect to continue to see, um, to see that rising and rising. That's Citadel, a uh, great story. I just wanna make the point that Citadel is not an outlier. It is not unique. And Adrenaline has been fortunate enough to work with credit unions of all different asset sizes at all different places across the country, uh, taking them where they, where they are and then rebranding them around their purpose. Not changing, uh, not seeking to change uh, the, the core of what makes them them, but really seeking to, to find that gem and to polish it and to tell it that story in a way that's more meaningful. Um, with the credit unions that we have branded, sort of rebranded, uh, starting from the moment of launch and then going, this, this little chart on the right goes up to Q4 of 2021, we see that their asset growth has outpaced the industry average by, I'm bad at math, but I think that's close to like three points. That's, which is really significant. And then we also see that happening here with member growth, that we see a two, a two point difference between how many of the, or the type of member growth they've experienced versus the industry average. So, rebranding around a purpose, finding that purpose, elevating it and telling the story has huge business impact. By the way, this is the kind of slide that credit union boards especially will eat up all day, all day, every single day. So we're proud to show it. Okay, that was centering purpose. We are now gonna talk about how you stand out with marketing. And to do that, I'm gonna uh, tell a story of, this is giving a little hometown love um, to a Los Angeles-based credit union, Western Federal Credit Union. They started out with about th at about 3.6 billion. They had 45 branches. They were growing like gangbusters. They were acquiring banks, or sorry, credit unions all over the country. And they wanted to be the first credit union that had a truly national unified offering. And their challenge was, how do you move past, um, past a legacy SEG name? It had been Western Airlines, which no longer even exists, by the way. And how do you take that? And is that gonna really help you grow in 
Raleigh, North Carolina, if, you're, if your name is Western. So first, making that name and taking it to remove all the barriers to entry. And second, creating a brand and a marketing platform that was going to help them achieve that dream of being truly a national brand with a national member base. So we rebranded them to, uh, to the Unify Financial Credit Union. Um, you, may have, you may have seen them and some of their marketing. And this was a huge, like, organizationally massive move um, for, for this credit union. But what Unify did was told the story of creating a member experience that was unified around their needs and was a unified experience across the country. And then you see this sort of infinity knot that has the, the member placed right at the center in the diamond. So taking that and rolling that new rebrand out through a very strategic cadence of member communications, of market communications, of, um, and then in their growth markets, having their, their brand experiences or their branch experiences really be brand beacons for this new Unify uh, credit union brand. But that's not the big part of this story. The big part of this story is that they became the first ever credit union sponsor of an NFL team, which it's NFL, it's the National Football League, has national reach um, when they became the official credit union of the LA Rams, again, hometown love, while we are here. And they juiced that sponsorship for all it was worth with advertising, um, advertising and integrated marketing that put them on the map and established Unified as a true player um, in the LA market. And then with advertising, um, using their spokesperson, John Johnson III, um, beloved LA Rams player, to further tell this story. So I'm gonna play this video, and then we'll talk about what, what makes it unique. On the field, LA Rams safety John Johnson III makes some pretty big stops. Off the field too. Nope. Mm -mm. But with Unify, it's a whole different story. Right this way, weather is here, our 24-7 call center, our full-service mobile app, or at over 100,000 nationwide ATMs. Unify gives you access to your money so you can connect your way. Learn how you can get access to Unify today, official credit union of the LA Rams. All right, so there's star power there, certainly, but what's really amazing about this kind of marketing, and especially when we um, look at it here, is that it's irreverent, it's funny, it's witty, it's lighthearted, it tells a different story than people expect from a credit union. It kind of breaks out of um, the lifestyle images or the, or the storytelling around what they do for the world, and they make it relevant, cool, fun, hip for you. And then that was brought to life with a full digital and paid social campaign that took that same, um, that same spirit and tone of voice and had fun, really offered um, offered a new way to see what a credit union had to offer, thereby attracting members who might never have, um, have considered a credit union before. And since then, Unify, over the past three years, has grown 33%, and that's, that's a third. Um, they've experienced one-third growth, so huge benefits um, that came out of this approach. And I feel like I, I want to sort of acknowledge the fact that there were, that was a big marketing investment. There was a big budget uh, attached to that. But this kind of thinking, this kind of approach can be adapted to work with any level of marketing investment in any part of the country. You could, uh, you could connect with your college, your local college sports teams, and thereby sort of expand your, your awareness and your reach and get a little of that, of that sports um, connection there. So great story with Unify. All right, last piece is building the member experience and why um, why CX, we're just gonna call it customer experience, but we know it's member experience, what we're talking about, why CX is such a powerful part of building brands that are gonna be able to meet the future. Um, 
this is a part of the presentation that I lovingly call, I'm gonna data your face off for a little bit, but I promise there's a good, there's a good reason for it. So what we know now is that 66% of, of all companies are not competing on products and they're not competing on services, they're not competing on the widget, they're not competing on the thing, they're competing on the experience that they deliver. And even more mind blowing, is that when you look at all industries, financial services is the second highest one that competes on customer experience, even higher than hospitality. And what's mind blowing about that is all hospitality has to sell our experiences. That's what they, that's what they do. Financial services, customer experience, is that is the, they are competing even more than hospitality brands on the experience that they deliver. There is also a gap between how marketers rate themselves in how they're delivering their member experiences and how their members actually say that they are delivering those experiences. So about 50% of marketers say, yeah, we're doing excellent. We actually use the term, we deliver an excellent customer experience. At the same time, 23%, less than half of consumers rate brands as delivering excellent CX. So there is a, there's a big gap. We think that we're killing it. We're not killing it, but that's okay because we can, we can kill it. Um, and just sort of to build on this a little bit more, uh, the, that 65% bubble on the right makes me want to just like hang up my hat as a marketer because 65% of people are saying, well, just give me a good customer experience, a good experience. And that's actually, even more important than great marketing. The fact is truly they have to work together. Um, and only less than 30% of, um, of people say that, that, excuse me, financial institutions are actually member-centric today. And 22% say financial institutions understand me. There was also a recent stat, didn't make it in here, that came out that said the number one thing that, that members are looking for is to feel heard. That's what they are looking for from their financial institution when they're thinking about the experience. So they just want to be heard and understood, understood as individuals. So the, quite a build there of all those. Whoops, we'll go back. Um, we can, and well, what I'm going to tell you here is that this is something that are now on credit union executives' minds. It is that now 81% of credit union executives, their number one objective isn't like digital transformation anymore. It is how do we improve the member experience. So. The way that we do that, and you got a little peek here, is by simply, it's not entirely rocket science, but it is it does require sort of a radical shift in the way that we think um, about things, is putting the member at the center of all decision making. So that means that when your institution has a priority, that priority has to be linked to a member need. So all decisions, product decisions, channel strategy decisions, all come down to looking at it from the member's point of view. But that doesn't even go far enough. Really, we need to look at the human beings. It's too easy to think about members in demographic chunks, in groups. When we begin to understand members as human beings, as idiosyncratic and quirky and busy and distracted and you know with with an eight second attention span of all of that then we can begin to de design experiences that are truly meant to meet them so how we do this we're going to talk about three ways one is you actually don't invest in member experience first you first go inside and you invest in your employee experience. You are empowering them with programs designed to help them grow, to succeed, to have the tools that they're gonna be able to do to serve members better, to, to carry them along their own career growth path. We also know that McKinsey tells us that financial institutions that, that invest in employee experience 
and have a great employee experience deliver 55% higher returns. This isn't like a, a nice to have thing that you wanna think about your employee experience and your culture, it is a must have on the path to delivering great member experiences. So that second part of how we begin to see our members and, and look through their eyes, we design uh, journeys, we design products and services always around their lead. And then the word personalization, I hesitate to use it because it gets thrown around a lot and what, the, what personalization really means. But to be able to create approaches that any member, wherever they are on their journey, you are meeting them and you are uh, delighting them and delivering them the tools that they need. And that actually requires sort of some humility and the ability to understand that you are not your brand, your credit union is not, no matter how you're killing it, you are not their first or their second or their third or their fourth or maybe even their the 50th thing on their mind. They have lives. They're, they have uh, jobs and careers and families and friends. Um, they have lots of other brands that are competing for their attention as well. So how do we begin to kind of see through their eyes? And first, we start with journey maps that this, this type of journey map might feel a little bit more um, familiar, which it really, it looks at the member experience and how those moments at which they interact with our financial institutions. So from searching to vetting to, to making a branch visit to maybe chatting afterwards and then sharing their great experience um, on their social channels, these are the ways that they interact with us. And you'll note that they go, they switch very seamlessly between digital, and physical and emotional um, uh, touch points. But the true way that you put, that you understand who your members are and you can design experiences around their lead, I, you're not meant to read any of this. We would be here until next Tuesday if you tried to, but these are 360 degree journey maps and they are able to consider the full member experience. So yes, the touch points with your credit union, how they're going to connect with you, what are the moments that they need to reach out, but also their, their life journey and their emotional states. You see those little smileys and smiley faces on the right side that we're able to try, and by the way, it's not always good, but we're able to meet them where they are with the experience that they need when they need it. So you combine tactical and experiential journey maps to be able to understand your, your member experience. And then finally, by reframing metrics. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've spoken with a credit union uh, executive um, in marketing or really just at, at any level when we ask about brand health, when we ask about their member experiences and, and they'll say, well, we have great net promoter scores. Like with our, our members, they, they're really happy and that's awesome. That's great, those, those matter. Um, and so do member experience surveys, but what we also need to be paying attention to just as much are measuring our retention and attrition. If you fought your way through those 10,000 other financial institutions and through the 10,000 messages that, marketing messages that people get and gotten into that like eight second span of attention and you've created this relationship, you've invested in onboarding and created the relationship, when do they leave? Why are they leaving? At what point in their journey with you do they leave? If we begin to track uh, retention and attrition in that same way, you'll know you can pinpoint with laser focus, here's where we need to focus in and improve our, our, um, our member experience. It's not about focusing on bad news, it's really just on looking to how we can improve. And there is a real business reason um, for this type of approach that if you are able to close that experience gap, what people want versus what credit unions are delivering, uh, credit unions that are considered member centric, um, they rate either excellent or very good in member centricity, can uh, deliver 40% more profits, which is ultimately that profitability goes back into the members and into the communities and like I mentioned earlier, the nation, the world, et cetera. So that's, that's where, what we're seeking to do. Okay, 
So to recap, and um, oh, we're doing great on time, recap and just go back over this. How are we going to meet the challenges of the future, which aren't really the challenges of the future. They're the challenges of today, but to future-proof the credit union first. We brand with purpose. Second is we stand out with our marketing. Third, we, we build and elevate the member experience. And then we grow and get the benefits of that. So thank you. I won't make you look at this too long, but again, that's who we're after and that's the pace at which we are after them. So thank you very much. I think we do have time for some Q&A. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Juliet? Yep. In the beginning, you had mentioned that two out of four um, individuals were looking at changing their financial institution. Do you know the why behind that? Uh, well, it's actually one out of four. Um, oh, it was one out of four, so 25%. Uh, um, I know the, the why in, in a couple of different ways. One is that there has been a lot of, um, the more there are big bank consolidations, uh, people are not getting the service that they have come to expect. And when I say people, I mean that could be businesses, that can also be consumers. So as, as we consolidate, that, that level of personal connection um, is lost. And then the second is that there has also been a massive migration of humanity that humanity really, even in our American cities, people live in different places now than they did in um, in March of 2020, March 10th of 2020. So they're seeking to, um, to have a financial institution that we know that something like 68% of all consumers want a credit union or a financial institution within 15 minutes of where they work or live. So as we see this mass change happening and we see that people are seeking um, more personalized experiences, and brands that stand for something bigger. Um, I, I don't like to talk about demographics, like you know, millennials do this, or Gen X does this, or because I, I think it is not as nuanced a picture as it could be, but we do know that aligning with brands that have a purpose, that stand for something more, that are able to demonstrate social good are more and more important to, to Gen Z uh, to sort of younger millennials and Gen Z who now make up something like 42% of the workforce. So there are all these factors that are just creating a, a sense of a lot of change and a lot of opportunity. Add to that the fact that FinTech is, there's, there's not a headline that I read that doesn't have something to do with a new FinTech doing this or that. So um, it's a moment of disruption. Great question. Anybody else? Okay. I'm sure this falls under the member experience portion of it. Yeah. Um, but the work you did is fantastic. It's well thought out. It looks great. Um, how? What I didn't hear was talking to the staff and making sure that they're delivering and they're living on the brand. They're living the brand every day. What kind of training types of tools? Because if you could put a tagline, you can say what you want the members to think, but unless your staff's actually living it, it's not a real brand. It's just a name. I, I mean, I, I could just, this is the, I'm so happy you asked that question. Yes, um, all of this is, is fine and good, and the minute that it falls apart at the employee experience, the minute that it just becomes, oh, uh, you know, the higher ups, they, they said we're gonna do this, then it all falls apart, and that's a huge waste of, of investment. Um, okay, so to start with, when you launch a brand, um, the biggest focus is not how we're gonna launch it to our members or the market. The biggest focus and the first focus is how we are going to launch it internally. So we, we create a launch event that is as, um, as celebratory and educational as it needs to be. So you are built, you are taking people from awareness, oh, okay, this is happening, my, my brand is changing, to, oh, this is, this could be really cool, to I, to I believe in this and I'm going to own it. And then you follow up 
with training. And so that training is, um, is multimodal training. So it happens in small groups. It happens in big groups. It happens over digital channels. So you're constantly creating a sustained, uh, a sustained sense of how we are going to, to live this brand. So just like creating a great member experience starts with a great employee experience, the way that you launch a, a new brand is um, absolutely focused on, on getting those, um, your internal audiences to, to own it, to celebrate it, and then ultimately to live it. Um, one more uh, just quick point on that. Uh, you, I motioned on Citadel that the, the values became a huge part of their brand. That's where your training can often start. It's not about what your logo looks like, it's what are these values and how, does the, how do those values translate into action. Sometimes there's like even role playing of like how does this new brand sound? If we're gonna talk to a member about it, how did we used to talk, how are we going to talk now? And let's um, have, your, have your employees own it, um, put it in their own words so they become advocates. Great question. Awesome. Thank you so much. Let's Thank give you. Julia a round of applause.